Good evening and welcome to the Kent School District uh, open session for the 2024 Capital and Technology Replacement Levy. We want to thank our community uh, in person and online who have joined us. Again, this is going to be a uh, open question and answer uh, back and forth uh, for the next hour and a half, as long as we have questions. And at this point in time, we are going to introduce ourselves at the dais so you know what subject matter expert is here. Good evening, I'm Faith Sisley and I'm Director of Communications for the Kent School District. I'm Dave Buzzard. I am the Executive Director of Operations for Kent School District. My name is Gordon Cook and I'm the Director of Facilities. Uh, my name is Raul Parango, Executive Director for Finance. Hey there, I'm Kyle Olson, Director of Technology. And, and I'm Brett Scribner, Assistant Director of Capital Projects. Thank you, team. So what we're going to do now is we are going to show a video um, which has the PowerPoint on it, and it does have a voiceover for... Welcome to the 2024 Kent School District Capital Projects and Technology Replacement Levy presentation. This presentation provides facts about why this levy is needed to provide students with safe, maintained school buildings, and technology education to prepare students for their futures. This levy will focus on critical or emergent needs for safety, repairs and improvements, and technology education. It's important to know that after December 2024, there is no voter approved capital funding source. These levy funds will provide a long range stability for the Kent School District. This $97.8 million levy is roughly 49% less than that of the failed April 2024 levy measure. As you can see, the technology portion of this levy is $24,450,000. 57% of that is directly for education, with 40% for technology infrastructure and 3% for administrative and operational salaries. Again, it is important to note that all levy projects are subject to change based on emergent needs and are subject to approval by the school board. There's critical equipment at or beyond its useful life expectancy with warranties expiring and failure rates increasing. These include our document cameras and classroom displays used by teachers and students in classrooms every day. You can find a list of all school projects posted on the KSD website. The levy will support students by paying for Microsoft licenses, Canvas, and student information software necessary for the teaching and learning that happens every day in our schools. This levy includes funds for a one-to-one -one laptop program necessary to prepare students for the 21st century jobs. Our laptops are on a seven-year cycle to ensure we're using taxpayers' dollars efficiently. It also includes training in artificial intelligence and digital literacy for our teachers. We know the importance of cybersecurity and keeping our systems safe from data breaches and our students secure online. This levy provides funds to address rising cybersecurity threats, which is required by our insurance carrier. Currently, some schools lack consistent wireless coverage to support easy access to modern learning with increased network capacity. This levy only funds those schools without coverage. The Capital and Technology Replacement Levy will also cover secure and maintain internet service for student learning, along with classroom voice amplification systems, which are out of warranty, to ensure an effective learning experience for all of our students. Intercom systems are essential to school buildings. This is a life safety issue with over 50% of our intercoms or components failing. Another system that has officially passed its end of life date is the uninterruptible power system that provides internet and data services to the entire district. This levy would provide funds to not only increase efficiency, but provide a reliable power source. This levy will also support home internet access for students who do not have it. This is necessary for most secondary students to complete their homework. The projected capital levy expenses are $73,350,000, 61% of that being for critical repairs, only for projects that are emergent or necessary. 
31% are addressing health and safety concerns. 8% administrative costs include 5% for contingency funds and 3% for administrative salaries to complete the projects. The capital portion of this levy supports critical projects like the Transportation Refueling Center. We need to bring it up to code because the in-ground fuel tanks are past their useful life. Our central kitchen needs a new emergency generator to keep approximately $1 million in food storage in our freezers from spoiling during a power outage. There are seven schools that need roof replacements. The average age of these roofs are 30 years old. Please check out the list of school projects on our website to find out which schools are included in this project. Six of our schools are in dire need of a boiler replacement to keep students and staff warm in the winter. The newest boiler on this list is from 2007 and the oldest boiler is from 1999. All are well past their scheduled replacement date. Our maintenance teams have done a tremendous job maintaining these systems but it is time to replace them. 31% of the capital portion of this levy focuses on health and safety projects beginning with fire alarm replacements. There are four schools that require replacement due to their age. Emerald Park's alarm is from 1999. Matson Middle School's fire alarm is from 1995. Sawyer Woods alarm is from 1993. And Cedar Heights fire alarm is from 1992. The health and safety of our students and staff is our top priority. One of our high schools has an exterior siting issue that needs repair to keep from causing additional interior damage due to rain and moisture. And although we do not want to use portables for instruction, we are using them to store equipment and for staff and community-based organizations to use. Six of these portables need new roofs to keep them dry and safe. As you can see from the photo, the Mill Creek Middle School field is and has been unusable after heavy rain. Students are not able to participate in PE or other athletic activities. We are currently working with the City of Kent to address the flooding issues and to provide a field that everyone can use year round. At Kent Ridge High School, we are currently renting fields from the City of Kent because its baseball and fast pitch field cannot be used and is unsafe for students. With these levy funds, the field will be fixed and modernized for our PE classes, student athletes, and community use. You can see the total amount of collection for years 2024 through 2027 for both capital and technology projects. It is important to note the district levies a dollar amount, not a rate. So if your property values increase or decrease, the amount the district can collect remains the same. As you know, Washington State has long faced challenges in fully funding education. The state does not provide funds for levy projects, and most school districts are reliant on their communities to bridge that gap. For more information on how schools are funded, please visit our website. A voter approved levy would mean the projected combined KSD tax rate would drop 61 cents, a decrease of 17% overall. This combined tax rate includes the Educational Programs and Operations Levy, passed last November, and our Bond Debt Service, as well as the Capital and Technology Replacement Levy. Please remember to mail your ballot by November 5th. You don't need a stamp. There are drop boxes at all of our local libraries. Thank you for your time to listen to this presentation and be an informed voter. Okay, great. Uh, for those of you uh, online, uh, Dr. Berenger is not here. That was a voiceover of the presentation. So I wanted to make sure that you know that he is not uh, on the dais. And we currently have no one in our boardroom and we would definitely like to take some questions from people online. So we're here to answer any of your questions that you have concerning the levy.
and Nathan, I believe we just still have one person on. So uh, again, uh, if you can uh, help us figure out a way to uh, engage our community better, um, the one person online, we would uh, truly appreciate that. We are open to any suggestion, any and all suggestions of how we can best or better communicate with our um, community to get them more actively engaged in these processes. Um, as you can see, we are doing things a little differently than we've done in the past. Um, we have all of our subject matter experts on the dais and are here um, to answer any questions um, that the community could have regarding anything that has to do revolving around the levy. And with our communications director here and me being the executive director of operations, I think we can answer probably any question other than curriculum at this point in time. So again, ask your questions. We are here. Okay, so we do have one question. Uh, it's from an anonymous attendee. I didn't see any recent advertisements or announcements regarding this meeting. When searching the district website on my phone, the announcement for this meeting was buried. Wanted to know if there's a question to that statement. So I'm going to go to my computer right now, my laptop, and I'm going to go to the Kent School District webpage. I'm going to scroll down to where it says capital and tech replacement levy on the uh, front page, and it says listening sessions. I'm going to click on listening sessions. It says you are invited to the 2024 listening sessions. And then on here, if you read through here, it says that we are pleased to invite you to our listening sessions. One, two, three, four, five, or six paragraphs down. The event details, it says that there's a August 20th meeting, which is today, September 17th, October 15th. The time is between 6 and 7.30. Location is Zoom and an in-person in KSD boardroom. So um, we're sorry that you didn't see that. I'm not too sure if you were looking on that buried or not, but, and I would go back to my Teams chat. Just an explanation for why no one is showing up here. Just 43% approved the last run of the levy. How is this one getting passed? I'll let Faith start with that one. <laughs> uh, so yes, the last levy did fail by 43%. And after... Um, Working with a consultant and looking at the uh, tax rate and the tax sensitivity of our community, we decided to cut this levy in half by 49% and rerun it again in November with a, hopefully a bigger turnout of, of uh, educated voters who can um, be informed and uh, vote on November the 5th. So uh, we also only included in that uh, amount that 49% of the previous failed levy are emergent and critical needs for this levy. So that means as you went through the presentation, uh, document cam cameras that are out of warranty and 10 to 15 years old. It means roofs for six schools that are average age 30 years old and need to be replaced. It means the 
transportation fueling center that is out of code compliance and the in-ground fuel tanks need to be um, brought above ground and brought up to code. Very important. Um, it means our technology education where um, the subscriptions that our staff and our students use every day, such as Microsoft, Canvas, uh, Skyward, Cumulative, uh, if that's $3.9 million. And if um, this levy doesn't pass, uh, those funds have to come out of uh, an account somewhere. So um, just know that we are trying to be very transparent. Uh, we also heard from our community that they wanted more detail. This levy presentation is seven and a half minutes versus the five minute one in April, providing not only projects and why they're needed because it gives their useful life or if they're beyond their useful life, but also provides the amount for each of these projects, the actual dollar amount, the estimated amount. Um, so hopefully providing more information, more detail, a less amount of money for the ask will help this levy to support our students. Thank you, Faith. Anybody else want to chime in? So next one was there was a levy passed several years ago to fund replacing athletics field, but that didn't happen. How is the public going to be assured that these funds are going to be spent on what included in the presentation? So that was a bond. It was a 2016 bond that was passed uh, for the replacement of grass fields. That is correct. And um, we can start from Kent Meridian High School. Kent Meridian High School, uh, we started to do the grass field. We looked into um, how much does it cost to mow it, fertilize it, water it, and uh, maintain it versus a synthetic field. So we did the math on what it would take for synthetic versus grass. Our grounds team worked closely with our facilities team and with our athletics team. And they came to a side-by-side -side comparison that the cost of the athletic field in synthetic uh, would be a much longer um, value add to the district than it would be for grass. So at that point in time, we and capital projects uh, came to the board and asked the board for them to approve the Kent Meridian baseball field to go synthetic instead of grass. This was gonna be a prototype for our district. Uh, it was an added of, uh, I think the cost of the entire project total was two plus million dollars that just covered the baseball field alone. So we got the practice field done in grass and we got the baseball field done um, in synthetic. Then we also did the fast pitch field in synthetic through a non-bond project that we did for the district. So now we have the fast pitch and KM uh, baseball as synthetic. So the board approved that to happen. The grass field at Mill Creek, the grass field at Kent Lake, the grass field at Kent Wood have not been be done because again, we wanted to move towards a prototype of synthetic versus grass. So there was a X amount of dollars uh, left in, and I want to say it's about three million left in all three projects. And Brett, you can chime in anytime. It was about three million dollars left for the Kent Lake, Kent Wood, Kent Ridge. Kent Ridge is not being used right now; cannot be used at all. And uh, we decided to come to the board and ask the board if we could take the remaining dollars from the 2016 bond grass fields of the three remaining high schools, and we asked the board, can we get at least all of these remaining three high schools done and designed and permitted so that when we do go out for a levy or a bond, we can get those passed in a synthetic field, which holds up much more uh, than a grass field. The board said yes, and they approved that. So, uh, Mr. Scribner got the plans and does have a plan for the Kent Ridge field it is actually uh, almost final permitted. And for at that point in time right now, now we're just waiting around for funds to be able to do that one. And then I think we have enough dollars to at least get something going on the Kent Wood and Kent Lake fields. 
uh, to make them synthetic as well too. Again, when you look at the cost of grass and the, uh, you know, our grounds team having to mow it, fertilize it, maintain it um, during bad weather, you can't play on them. So, you know, synthetic, it can still be raining and you can still be playing on it. Um, so that's where we are with the, with the athletic fields. It's not that, um, you know, being spent on what it was uh, uh, for, we are still using those dollars on those fields. We're just not using those dollars to put in the grass fields that we have gone away from because the prototypical uh, synthetic field is now our new KSD standard. Is it fair to say that in 2015, when these projects were cho chosen for the 2016 bond, um, that was quite a few years ago, and the best decisions were made at that time with that information. And now things have evolved and changed. Um, flooding and other issues are becoming more and more prevalent. So now, with the board's approval, these projects have changed. You're absolutely right, Faith. And and again, we could have an open discussion. We'd love to get more questions in here and some people in the board. But um, I think what happened is um, we had a few people retire in the district. Um, I took over uh, capital uh, and then we hired Brett. And with uh, the help of Brett and Gordon, who uh, took over as the facility director of facilities and Brian Smith, um, our athletic director, we all came together and said, you know, synthetic is the way to go. Our community needs to be able to play on our fields just as much as our kids do. So how can we offer the community, um, you know, basically a 24 seven, I should say that, but you know, seven days a week, five days a week, we can play on the fields uh, from the school. And then the, our community, Kent Parks and Rec, Covington, um, King County, we, we can let our other uh, community partners out there you be able to use our fields um, and they can use them more uh, regularly with synthetic than they can with grass. So that was the determination of where we went with um, switching from grass to synthetic. Yeah, and <clears throat> to, uh, to add to that, Dave, uh, I know that the field under drainage is usually replaced when we replace a field and switching to synthetic versus a grass field um, will extend the longevity of that system because you don't get that buildup of organics uh, that you get when you have a grass field. That's a great point. So uh, remember, we just replaced uh, the turf at Kent Meridian at French Field mm -hmm. last year. We did our year and a half, or we did that one uh, together. So that field drainage has been in there for 17 years. So think about that. A grass field only lasts 10, 8 to 10 years, and then you have to rip it all up. So now when you do a synthetic field, uh, you get all your drainage down, put your rock down. And then when you put your, your synthetic on top of that, when that G max or the, when the compression of it and the rubberized goes away and you can't get that bounce anymore, you just peel back one layer and put a new layer down. You don't have to rip up the whole field like what we do with irrigation and under drainage. So I hope that answered your question. I know we kind of got off on a little tangent there, but again, we have people here on the dais that definitely can answer any of those questions um, very extensively. So it was basically, it's more efficient to have synthetic fields, a better use of taxpayers' dollars in this day and age currently. Absolutely. And when you look at it, it you, you bring up a good point, Faith. In 2015, when that was being devised for the 2016 bond, uh, and Brett will speak more to this when he does his uh, capital uh, projects update and CFP update this year. But, um, you know, the cost of construction has just gone up exponentially uh, over the years. I mean, we've seen uh, up to 10, 12, 15 percent just in one year of the cost. Um, I can tell you that no district, no district uh, saw that coming uh, back in 2016, 2017. Um, and, you know, uh, with COVID, there was a shortage of material. Uh, there was, so the cost has just been rising and rising and rising every year. Um, and again, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that these projects that the team has, de has developed with these prices on there um, do have some of these items uh, that, um, that we want to make sure that we capture the price and some escalation going forward. Okay, so Dave, could I just make one more comment before yep. you proceed to the next question regarding the 
previous question about uh i think the question was sorry i'm trying to how's this getting past uh and so in addition to to what fate had mentioned earlier um this is the reason why we're having this uh, discussion q and a is to be able to provide education to all our voters so that they could make some intelligent decision before the actual election comes. And so to that end, we have another session like this on September 17th. So I would highly, highly encourage you to tell your friends, your families to join us on September 17th so that you could get some intelligent discussion, uh, form your uh, you know, your decision before you go to the ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Roel. Absolutely. Uh, next question from a anonymous member, just offering feedback. The constant changes as to how funds are spent are not helping to pass levies and bonds. The board approving changes does not help with PR. I'm not against the synthetic fields, but the survey says the voters are not in favor. The fields were at the bottom of the priority list from the community. KSD made a deal with the city of Kent to raise the money for fields, correct? So I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. So uh, KSD, uh, the Kent School District right now, we are, are in a grant application for Mill Creek. This, uh, this grant application is a $20 million EPA grant um, application that will be submitted hopefully at the end of this month. We are working closely with the city of Kent on this. Uh, we have uh, approved plans or approved pre-approved application plans for the field. It will be a field much like what French field looks like now, a full football field with an eight lane rubberized track, synthetic, raised two feet off the ground, lots of parking, community gardens, um, all the water retention and storm retention we need. So we're hoping that this uh, $20 million grant will be uh, granted and, and given to the Kent School District. We think we have a really good chance. So, and we also have some community business partners with us, uh, Central Rendu, um, uh, Mother of Africa, World Relief, and Anu. And they are working right alongside the district and the city uh, to help as that project, if we get that grant and that field at Mill Creek can be synthetic raised so it floods no more, not only will it bring the equity to those children, that school, but that community will thrive around a place that breeds community. The Mill Creek is the one thing that I know Dr. Berenger and I have had many, many discussions on, and I know Faith and, and everybody on this team, we've had this. Um, it's it saddens me every time I have to go down there and look at that field. Uh, so we're hopeful that this grant will pass. Um, so going back to the, the the just the answer to that question, there's not a deal with the city of Kent. We are in a partnership, but we are the applicant for the grant. So the city will not get that money. The school district will get every penny of that money. Um, there will be some um, funding that will go out to our CBOs and some out to the city for expedited plan review, but all of those pennies and those dollars will come back through. Um, and yes, uh, you're right. When the survey came back that said that the, the, the fields were at the bottom of the priority from the community, I think it was about halfway up. I'm not too sure if it was all the way at the bottom. Um, but again, uh, you know, fields... Uh, bring a whole lot more than just PE or physical education to the district um, and our children. It brings, again, it brings community, brings a sense of community, brings a place that you can have events and not have to worry about a, a flooded field. And the, this field will be lighted um, so you could have evening events and weekend events. And um, it, it just brings community together. I want to piggyback off of that because uh, in addition to the survey, we had, I don't know, a dozen families, community members attend board meetings last spring to ask for support with Mill Creek and the flooding. We had some students address that as well. So in addition to the survey, uh, families took their time to come to board meetings and staff from Mill Creek to ask the board to address the situation. So we have to 
you know, not only do we look at the survey data when these projects were chosen, but we also heard from other parts of our community of how important these fields are. Um, and at Kent Ridge as well, the student athletes and community cannot use those fields at all. So we have heard additional um, information from other sources rather than the survey. Um, and thank you for offering your feedback. We so appreciate that. Um, but the constant changes as you term that, um, we're right up front that we say these are emergent critical needs and that at any moment these could change because new information becomes available. Just as I said before, in 2015, when the um, bond project was chosen um, for the fields, we had new information later, as Dave indicated. So if a boiler goes out tomorrow at a school, we're gonna take funds and fix that boiler. If the roof starts leaking, we're gonna take funds and fix the, the roof with the board approval, of course. And so with a levy, the, they are subject to change the projects with new information as new information becomes available, which are the emergent needs. Um, and we're trying to be really transparent about that because we know um, I, my washing machine went out this summer. I wasn't expecting that, but I had to take funds to, to fix that. So just like that, the district has things that fail and uh, we have to take funds and fix it. So these levies are purposely set up that way so that they are flexible and can address emergent needs. Now, will we try to stick to the plan? Of course we will. And um, we'll move forward with that. But we, I just want you to understand that sometimes the changing uh, projects are due to emergent needs. Thank you, Faith. And I will piggyback on top of that one. I just wanted everybody to understand that whoever's in here, I know it's being recorded. So I hope people actually watch. When we did the initial bond in 23, uh, uh, Dr. Berenger and I, uh, Brett and others uh, uh, hired OAC that came in and actually did our bond task force. So we had approximately 30 people from the community that came in, uh, looked at all of the projects that uh, Gordon and his and Brett and the team put together. Um, this was prior Kyle, so you weren't here, unfortunately, um, but we, we love having you. Um, we missed you back then. Um, but the pro so all of those projects got shown to that 30 person task force. That 30 person task force said, yes, this here are all the projects. And yes, $495 million. That's it. We, we're good with that. When that failed, yes, should we have went back out to the community? Yes. Do we want to keep doing that? Yes. At that point, though, we already had a task force. Mm -hmm. We didn't call the task force back. So what we did is the task force already said yes to all the projects. And here's the priority of the projects that we want. So when Brett and, and team went out for the next levy, all we did was cut the, the lowest priority and moved it up. And then when that levy failed, we cut the next priority level and moved it up. We have come to a point now with this levy that we have cut it all the way to the point where it's just the tip top. So I wanted to make sure that uh, people understood that. Uh, here on the, the slide says the fields will cost 18 million. Would the grant pay for the whole cost then? Yes, but, or and I should say. So we have the field on this levy. If this grant goes through, and we said this at the last time, I, I think uh, Mr. Riley was here, uh, Mr. Joe Riley was here, and we, uh, we, we let them know and everybody know, if the $20 million grant or 18, it's $20 million and then there's some money that go out to the city again and to the community partners and some other things. So whatever that 18 million or $20 million will cover, it will cover. We are putting this on the levy in case this grant doesn't go through because we want to be able to do other things maybe to this field if this can't go through we're not too sure yet and again we'll get the community to come back and we will have a long conversation about that but if this grant does go through the good part about it is is that those dollars that are slated for mill creek now whatever small amount we need to do to finish the grant project at Mill Creek, all the rest of that money will come back to the levy 
and we can have another community group task force for capital and we can say okay here's the next level of things that need to be done that are emergent or critical in the district and we can go and get the feedback and do those which brings up a good point the KSD together uh, committee will be meeting in October. If anybody would like to join that committee and be part of that process, um, the information's also on the same place on the homepage of the KSD website. Oh, and I do want to uh, also say that the slide presentation tonight indicated that the projects were on the website. We are actually launching a new website on Thursday, and so we do not have the projects uploaded yet but know that they'll be coming in the next week. So I just wanted to, to make that clarification. Thank you, Faith. Uh, next question in is, from anonymous, it says class sizes at every building are at or above the hard cap. A suggestion for passing a levy would be to quickly fix this problem because parents care about class size and won't like this. We too care about class size. We we understand, uh, but with the uh, funding source going away um, from our pandemic funds. Um, there had to be, there's some hard decisions that had to be made in, in reduction. So um, we, we understand this. And uh, at this point, the state does not fully fund education. As Dr. Berenger stated in the slideshow, we've been struggling for years. And even after McCleary supposedly gave us more funds, education of the state budget is down 9%. 9% is it's down. So not only are they not increasing funds, they're actually the percentage of the entire Washington state budget that goes toward education is decreasing. So I, I would encourage everyone to contact your um, local legislator and really um, help them understand the, the need that we can't keep relying on our communities, that we need the state to fully fund education. Thank you, Faith. I also would like to clarify that the funding sources you already mentioned are, are are very different. You know, the cap and tech levy that we're talking about today uh, are earmarked for capital projects and also uh, technology, whereas the funding for class size reduction is the um, you know the state the state funding, which is the operating funds. Uh, now we're very thankful for our community for passing the EP and O levy, and we would greatly appreciate if you would continue to support that. Those are funds that could be used for class size reduction, but at this point, those funds are already earmarked uh, for some of the existing projects. And so like what you said, it is really important for us to talk to our legislators and to lobby for more funding for the general operation of the school district so that they would positively impact our students. Okay, next one is uh, from an anonymous member, uh, attendee. I'm just trying to tell you why people are voting no. I've heard all of these same answers before. If the district continues to run the same levies and state that things change based on new information, that's why people are voting no. Emergent needs should already be accounted for. New information indicates a lack of research. Okay. So if when the grant comes through, then there's 18 to 20 million to play with. This does, I'm sorry, this is not a good answer. These kind of answers are not going to help pass the levy. Let me try to clarify if I can. So the grant is from the state, is a federal grant. So it's coming from the federal government. Uh, if we, if the Kent School District gets the $20 million grant, all of those dollars have to be used at the Mill Creek Middle School field project. There is a field project on this levy. And if the grant does come through and we are able to use those funds, 
from the federal grant, then the dollar amount on this levy slated for Mill Creek will be used for other items according to what we can have a focus group or a task force come in and help us look at all the projects that we have that are emergent or critical, and we can decide from there what we will do with those remaining funds. So I hope I wanted to make sure um, that everybody knew that one. And again, if Brett wants to, maybe you can talk a little bit. Uh, can you talk, maybe speak to a project that had to be done uh, through levy? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> actually, Dave, I'll go ahead and, and uh, add to your grant discussion. Uh, the grant is really going to help us be able to control the uh, flooding waters down there at Mill Creek. Um, without that grant passing, it would be very difficult to actually do anything uh, with a, a, a field down there. But with these grant dollars, it will help out not just the Mill Creek field, but also the surrounding area. Uh, I believe uh, James Street and and um, other portions of the city uh, down there along Mill Creek that are uh, notorious for flooding during hard rains. Um, and yes, as far as projects that have been identified, um, the 2016 bond and the 2018 levy, um, those projects were identified as early as 2012. Um, so it was by, it was 2016 when, when the uh, bond finally passed and the identified projects were put on a list. Um, when we met with the community group, we did identify almost $2 billion worth of projects that could be done throughout the district. And three of the critical needs projects that had made that initial bond that failed and went to the levy and failed uh, were projects that were identified and, and known about through the maintenance teams and the capital projects teams. And um, one, one emergency project that came up was the failure of the Kent Lake fire alarm. Uh, this, this project went out and became part of the uh, 2018 levy funds were pulled from contingency in order to get the work done and um, also identified for the bond, the 2023 bond that failed was the Meadow Ridge fire alarm and also the Meadow Ridge boiler, uh, both of which had failed this last year. And we had to go ahead and, and um, push those projects up through the 2018 levy. And um, and with that being said, we, we, are, we are moving forward with projects that uh, that we do know about but aren't on a list. Um, but that's why we're going out for the 2024 levy so that we can uh, get the funds together to get those needed projects in design ahead of their failure and also uh, complete the projects on our current list with the 2016 bond and the 2018 levy. Thanks, Brad. And I believe uh, in the last session, uh, we were talking in, in Roel, I think you were actually in the uh, audience. Um, there was a question, I believe, about what happens uh, if no funding comes through. And I believe the answer that I gave would be, um, so if there weren't any, so if the bonds completed and all the projects are done and the levy, uh, there are no capital funds and uh, levies do not get passed or bonds do not get passed. And we have an emergent need to replace a roof or a boiler or a fire alarm. Uh, Roel, could you explain where those dollars would come from? So um, I remember that conversation. And by the way, for those of you who are listening and watching this, there would be a budget presentation tomorrow. Uh, the budget will be for adoption. Uh, there is a slide in this budget presentation that shows the forecast, the general fund forecast. And to your question, uh, in the event that this uh, levy levy don't pass, uh, and we still need to fix all the emergent needs, uh, we will be using and we will be forced to use the general fund uh, in order for us to be able to uh, prevent roof 
from leaking and uh, fixing all those items that are deferred maintenance in nature. And as you could imagine that the budget at this time is already incurring structural deficit at the tune of about $9 million for 24-25 and approximately 7 million yearly thereafter. And so that amount uh, will continue to grow if we were to use some of those funds for deferred maintenance uh, projects. And what, could, what that means is in order for us to be able to balance the budget, we had to make some reductions uh, in other areas of the budget, which unfortunately negatively impact the services that we provide to our children. Thank you, Ro. And And let's remember too that the technology piece of this, it addresses our one-to-one -one devices. I don't know, Kyle, if you'd like to speak to that. Sure, yeah, no, the, the funding for this is critical, right? We've already talked about um, with this with this new ask of the levy, uh, pushing devices to be a seven year seven year cycle. That's uh, a little crazy, to be honest with you. Like people are like, "What are you guys doing?" And uh, this is the emergent need of what we're doing. We're trying to stretch these dollars as much as we can, right? So, um, if the levy doesn't pass, uh, we still need devices, right? So we talk about boilers and stuff, and that's super important. And you know, from my perspective, I know it's probably not as important as a boiler and a roof, but from my perspective, it is, right? When we're talking about teaching our kids and, and the instructional um, practices, right? Utilizes and, and necessitates that we have devices for our, our students, so. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. And then the only person we haven't heard from is uh, Mr. Cook and I'm gonna put Mr. Cook on the spot um, and ask him uh, where we uh, stand right now. Uh, Cause this the piece of information here before, so uh, new information indicates a lack of research. So I think it was up in Bev's like, why are these things failing? Why haven't we already uh, replaced some of our failing things or things that are critical? Can you answer or give some context behind that? Yes, what, one of the reasons is that we've had, our maintenance crew does a really good job of extending the life of our um, infrastructure. <clears throat> Throughout the years, we've been able to extend the life of infrastructure and then use monies from bonds and levies to do other things. Uh, but at some point, they have to be eventually taken care of. Awesome. And thank you for that. Now, what we've done, uh, and again, uh, what, we've, what we've been working on, uh, and we will have this done by the end of this year, is really a complete um, survey other than the six-year uh, state and study survey. We are doing an internal survey of every single roof, boiler, HVAC system, windows, carpet, furniture, uh, elevators. We are doing this of when the last time it was replaced, uh, the longevity or what the life cycle of that is and when it should be replaced next. And that is all being digitized in a format to where we should be able to just click on that uh, going forward and say, okay, what do we need to replace in, in the next 10 years? What do we need to replace in the next 20 years? Um, that had not been done before. It was all, um, uh, it was in a format, but it was not in a digitized format that we could filter and do it by school. So uh, we have been working on that for probably about a year. We have another question um, from anonymous attendee. Mill Creek alone will cost 18 million. So, yes. And the reason why is all of the infrastructure that has to go in to just accommodate a 4.5 to $5.5 million field. A regular synthetic field uh, Canyon Ridge, I can talk Canyon Ridge because we, we have almost all of those numbers in to the penny. At Canyon Ridge Field was a grass field behind Old Sequoia uh, Middle School, KPA, uh, Ken Phoenix Academy. So that field is going to roughly run about $5.1, $5.3 million when it's finished. That is a full synthetic um, football field with soccer, uh, long jump, um, a uh, eight lane track rubberized and a small grass area. That's what that would take. All underground drainage underneath of it is synthetic, uh, all ADS chambers. 
take that field and put that at Mill Creek, that's what that field would look like if anybody hasn't seen it yet. Everything below that is where most of the money, so about $5 million for the field and about $13 million to put all of the retention, storm drainage, um, compensatory storage, and landscaping, that's how much that's going to cost. So yes, it is a lot of money. But in an area where that is, um, we need it. That flooding, that that will also take care of a lot of the flooding, like uh, Brett had talked about, in the surrounding area on James and Smith. Our children walk to school every day coming down those roads. And when it's wet uh, and it's rainy and they have to walk, um, it, you know, some of some of this, I mean, Mill Creek's over flooded. I mean, I've seen water over top almost into the building at Mill Creek before. So, uh, you know, th this is going to be a great thing. Okay, next one is, I'd suggest people would be far more likely to vote yes if they knew deferred maintenance is being taken care of instead of $18 million to deal with seasonal flooding of an athletic field. So again, the $18 million from the grant is a federal environmental protection agency grant that we've applied for. It is only for that particular item in that particular program. So we couldn't, we, we couldn't use those $18 million from a federal EPA grant to do anything other than that field. Yeah, the other dollars that are being asked for uh, for the field projects is for uh, Kent Ridge, which has had a full design completed. It is sitting in permit with the city of Kent. Uh, they are literally just waiting for a contractor information in order to release those permits. Um, however, we cannot move forward with that project uh, without the passage of this levy because of the costs of that field and, and the... Uh, work surrounding that area. We are also in talks with the city of Kent. Uh, they are willing to provide lighting for us out at Kent Ridge. Um, it, and in partnership, uh, they'll be able to use some of those uh, facilities for uh, community use uh, outside of school hours. So going back to the $18 million, so I just want to make sure everybody knows that $18 million is for the Mill Creek project and for the Kent Ridge project. That's so that's correct. a combination of both projects. Yes. Uh, the question is, how much is being budgeted for the Kent Ridge fields? We have an architect's estimate on that field right now, but uh, we do not want to release the actual number ahead of a bid because we don't want to influence the bid results from the contractors that are bidding on the project. Brett, do you want to give uh you want to give like a a little bit of a low and a little bit of a high range of where you think those are? Um yeah, just, so just just for contextual purposes. So, so uh, through the design of the Kent Ridge project, uh, obviously we have to go all the way down to the under drainage, replace all of the under drainage. Uh, there will be some uh, extended, uh, there will be a uh, uh, like a cross country track. There are some trails around Kent Ridge that are still on the property of Kent Ridge High School uh, that will also be uh, updated during this, during this field renovation. Um, and the range, depending on on uh, whether all alternates are accepted, would probably be somewhere between I would say a low of of seven million and a high of eleven million. Um, our architect's estimate came in within that range, um, but again, I wouldn't want to share specifics uh, to influence the uh, bid results when it does go out to bid. 
So your question is, so the slide is not quite accurate then? Yes, it is accurate. These are estimated dollar amounts. So again, we don't want to give out, there's two projects here. There's the Mill Creek project for the levy, and there's the Kent Ridge project for the levy. Not doesn't have anything to do with the grant. Want to make sure we get that. So the slide is correct. There's $18 million being estimated to be split between both projects. One project may be a little bit more expensive than the other project, but we do not want to give out what our budgets are for something that has not been designed or, or bid yet because our contractors can start with that number and say, oh, okay, I'm going to start at that number right now. It's like getting a, an estimate for your painting for your house. If you were to paint your house and you were to tell somebody, I only have $5,000 to paint my house, the bid would probably come in at $5,000. If it, and it probably would only cost you $3,000. The, the, and again, I'm just making things up here just for comparison. This is why we don't give out our budgets uh, for specific projects at specific times. I hope uh, the community can appreciate that because that is uh, looking out for um, our taxpayer dollars. And as far as the other question, uh, we cannot comment on uh, legal matters. And just for everybody online, uh, we do not have anybody in the audience. In case anybody was wondering. So the question is, I thought you said Mill Creek was $5 million for the field itself and 13 to take care of all the drainage issues. Is that correct? Yes. But just remember, don't look at the slide. If you're looking at the slide for Mill Creek, the $5 million versus the $13 million is the $18 million, the $20 million EPA grant. So can you acknowledge that that you understand there's an EPA grant out there for, I'm gonna call it $20 million because it is a $20 million grant. And this $18 million that you see on the slide is for two projects, Mill Creek and for Kent Ridge. 5 million for the field and 13 million to take care of the drainage is our estimate, is, this, is the current estimate for the grant that has not been fully designed yet. And I'll add to that, Dave, uh, the grant, uh, we are not actually allowed to use any of the grant money to physically put a synthetic field on our property. The grant money will solely be used for the uh, water detention and retention system and um, and the preparation work that needs to go into the subgrade of the field itself. I hope that answered that question. Again, I have to say, I really appreciate the people that are online and asking us questions. Um, uh, we, we appreciate that. We know everybody's busy. We all know, we know everybody has uh, lives outside of their work and uh, family. And uh, I just also want to say, I appreciate everybody here on the dais that's taken the time out of their uh, day uh, away from their families. And also our... Uh, IT staff and our communication staff that is behind the scenes uh, running all of our digitized uh, slide presentations and helping us with the chat. So appreciate uh, UKSD members being here as well.
Dave, I want to go ahead and thank you for taking the lead on the discussion tonight and uh, and uh, presenting the questions and and uh, yeah, facilitating, helping us helping us out. Uh, always here to help. Whatever we need to do. And I don't see any more questions coming through. So wait a few more minutes and see. Again, we'll uh, stay here as long as questions keep coming in. Um, again, we appreciate our community out there. Um, we, uh, uh, I think Faith is uh, asked a couple of different times, and I'll say it once again. Um, if if anybody out there in the Kent community has any suggestions at all on how we can um, reach uh, more of our community, I should say, um, please let us know. We're always up for suggestions. Um, trust me, we're here. We learn every day. Uh, you know, we're in the teaching and learning business. Um, we don't have all the answers. I know uh, Dr. Berenger said that many times. I, I keep telling myself that we don't have the answers. Um, we, we look for our community to help um, guide us through certain things, um, especially when it comes to uh, community engagement. Um, we just want our community to be more engaged um, and, um, you know, I've said it more than once is that, um, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, compartmentalizing certain things, um, again, you know, why are we here? Why, why are the, why are the subject matter experts on this field taking time out of their day, um, uh, to be a part of this is because, um, we we're committed, um, and we're here and we show up every day, um. And, and we really, we're, we're thriving um, and we're asking our community um, to come join us. Um, you know, we have open arms. Um, but again, every decision that, that, that the community thinks should be made, um, it's different um, when, when you sit down and think of all the things that you have to do uh, in a district. So um, I think about that uh, quite, quite often. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, working in the public sector is, uh, it's not easy. Um, and, uh, it, you know, we, we always have to ask ourselves why I, I know why, cause I, I, I want to do it for our kids. I want to do it for this community. It's about student staff and community. That's what it's about. It really is. And, um, again, we're here, we're learning, um, let us know how more how best we can reach our community. We want our student athletes and uh, those that participate in PE to have the same opportunities that other schools have at Mill Creek and Kent Ridge. So um, it's uh, fair that they would have the same opportunities. They would have fields that they can play on, that they can um, access easily, that are safe and dry and well maintained. I do appreciate the feedback on the on the detail on the slide. So we'll look into that. Okay, I heard the grant is only for the Mill Creek athletic field. Now you are saying it's for the Mill Creek and the Kent Ridge. You said the 13 million is for drainage. Is that covering both schools? More detail on the slide would make it with this all the more clear to the public. Okay. I'm going to slow down because I know sometimes I talk really fast. So I'm going to speak to the slide that is on, uh, that is being shown right now. Hopefully you can see it. When it comes to the 2024 levy that we're asking $18 million for, there are two projects that fall under the estimated $18 million. There's a Mill Creek project, which is uh, providing a raised synthetic field, currently a non-usable field when heavy rains occur. And then there's a Kent Ridge field, which is also currently a non-usable field, design and permit have been completed, currently renting fields from the city of Kent. So when it comes to the 2024 levy in this screen, the $18 million is for both of those projects. That's what we're asking for. The eight, the 
the Mill Creek project from the levy will not happen if the $20 million EPA grant from the federal government is not given to the Ken School District. So if we do not get the $20 million grant that is separate from the levy, we will not be able to do the Mill Creek project because the Mill Creek project is over $18 million to be able to do the project. I hope that makes more sense. Sorry if that was confusing. Faith, I just want to verify again on our website that uh, tonight's meeting, uh, then we have a September 17th meeting, we have an October 15th meeting, and those will be uh, same as this, Zoom and in person at the boardroom, starting at 6 o'clock, uh, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. That's correct. Thank you. And we do have translation if we need it. If, if, if we need it. Definitely. Just email translations at kent.k12.w.us. Uh, the information can be found on the website, right in, in on the homepage of how to access um, language services if you need them. Next statement doesn't really have a question, but I'll read the statement. It says, I appreciate your time. About 25,000 folks have voted this levy down three times. I don't think community engagement is a problem. I'm trying to tell you why people are voting no. I really do hope that KSD is able to make the needed adjustments so that the community is able, willing to vote yes. And I will just say that I um, am humbled um, and appreciate that you appreciate knowing that we are here um, after hours uh, on our time um, to be as forward facing, honest as we can uh, with the subject matter experts that are in these fields. Uh, that do that. I mean, I'll go around the horn. Faith has been in our communications team for quite some time. Um, I have been in operations for seven years. I took it over from Fred Long. Um, Gordon Cook has been with the district 16 plus years. Um, started off in HVAC. Um, now he is our director of facilities. Uh, Gordon is 
uh, more than well versed to talk about most any of our buildings um, and their conditions and what they do. Uh, I'll skip over Raul for a second and go to Brett. I'll skip over Raul and Brett or Kyle and go to Brett. Um, Brett was our district roofer for um, over five years, worked in maintenance uh, under Gordon. Um, and then we. Um, and uh, graduated from Kent Meridian Kent, High School. Kent Meridian High School. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Kent yeah. Go Royals, right? Uh, and then Brett uh, applied to uh, come into the capital projects team um, three, four years ago. Um, and now he leads that team. Uh, he oversees all of capital. And then we have Kyle, who came from Sumner School District. Uh, and he's been um, just a great person uh, to, to really get us um, on track for our IT and our, um, our uh, device needs and everything that has to do with infrastructure, uh, which is very important. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Raul, who is our uh, new executive director of budget and finance. So uh, we uh, welcome him um, to be able to speak to anything um, that has to do with the budget. And again, I will just say um, thank you um, for all that you all do uh, each and every day. Um, and Raul, I am uh, really looking forward to your um, presentation tomorrow night for the budget. Um, I'm very interested myself. So uh, I, I know you'll do a great job. And and uh, I hope our community um, will come or at least listen um, to get more um, well-versed and educated on the uh, uh, where we are fiscally as a district. Well, thank you. And I truly welcome our community to join us, uh, join us tomorrow. The more people who understand our budget situation, uh, the more people are gonna be able to share their neighbors, their relatives, their friends. And we truly would like uh, for you to be educated about our uh, current budget situations. And anytime you have any question about any part of the budget, uh, feel free to contact me, email me. Uh, I'm available. Uh, I think my contact information is on the website. So thank you. Raul brings up a great point. I believe all of us are on the website. Uh, and we can be contacted directly. Um, I know that uh, a lot of times we do answer a lot of questions. Uh, I think sometimes it doesn't really have to go to a <laughs> public records request, but um, we're more than willing uh, and happy to, to, to take that as well too. But in the spirit of trying to be uh, more forward facing and transparent, um, all you have to really do is just email any one of us out here with questions about the levy and where we uh, are and where we stand on it, we would be more than glad. Uh, and I know I, I will I will actually add uh, Dr. Berenger to that uh, list as well too, because uh, I know that uh, Dr. Berenger is uh, really good at uh, responding. So it is 714, we don't have any other questions. We'll wait a few more minutes and see if anybody else is on and then we will um, close. So it looks like we still have one attendee on. Okay. Uh, does that, do you have any more questions, the person that's on? We have no one in the audience and we only have one person on. Just wanted to make sure if you had any more questions. Okay, so... Uh, we do not have any attendees online. We have nobody in the boardroom. Um, it is 7.15. I do wanna extend out again, uh, my appreciation for everybody on the dais who uh, stayed tonight to answer questions and also for our IT and our communications team uh, behind the scenes that uh, keep us mic'd up and going well. So thank you and we will close this meeting.